hello, everybody. Um, I'm Marty Hitzman, Director of Marketing here at Empist, and I'm here with Ken Hughes, our virtual Chief Information Officer who handles a lot of the strategic decisions for our accounts. And we're here today to simply talk about uh, hardware refreshes or uh, lifecycle management, um, more specifically on desktops, laptops, uh, servers, anything else, uh, network. I think uh, that'll be the focus of today's conversation. Yeah, great. Uh, I'm going to kick it off here, um, uh, Ken. Uh, Forrester had commissioned a report, well, Dell had commissioned a report, Forrester did the analysis on it, and they were talking about hardware and the time that um, companies uh, refresh their hardware. Um, it seems like it was a three or four year cycle is probably what people are uh, doing right now. But this report is really referencing that maybe it should be a little more frequent. It was done in October of 2022, maybe more on a two-year cycle. And so here's just three findings that they, key findings that came out. You know, companies are updating their devices, device strategies for more flexible work and environments. And really the security breaches and a more flexible work styles are driving companies to rethink this approach uh, to device management and refresh. And um, while people were on a, a traditional three or four year refresh, many are seeing uh, the potential benefits of moving to a more accelerated refresh model. Additionally, um, outdoor, outdated devices cause poor end user experience and exposure to potentially costly security vulnerabilities. Um, I'll just let that sit. I don't need to go into the detail on it. And then also, <coughs> uh, you know, a hardware, uh, uh, an accelerated refresh uh, cycle could protect the businesses, organizations, devices, enable employees, and bolster the bottom line. So really just shortening up that uh, refresh cycle actually helps kind of net promoter scores because they're, you know, for security, for people able to use faster equipment, um, and just be more productive and get things done. So, uh, yeah, let's just kick into that and kind of, you know, talk about, you know, that pr productivity that's gained just from refreshing mm -hmm. uh, hardware. Great. Well, uh, speaking of productivity, I'm reminded of a horrible experience that I had with, with one particular PC, and I just could not convince my employer that it was worth uh, replacing that PC. But I kid you not, from the time that it that it seized to the time that I finally got it to shut down and to come back, I would lose 30 minutes. 30 minutes from the time that I shut down each of the applications, finally got that thing down, got the VPN back up, and reconnected. An immense amount of cost in my time and my aggravation. You talked about it in your comment, too. Um, it, it feels good to have a machine that works, and there's a, a vast economic return for keeping your people working. Uh, specifically, uh, we have a study that shows that uh, slow computers can cost your users 13 minutes per day. Break that out across a year, and that's 5.5 working days per year. So it's no small thing. In fact, it's a big thing it's a week to of vacation. keep your assets working well. Yeah, that's a week of vacation that somebody's taken off every year mm -hmm. uh, while they're just wasting time. It's another unpaid week. Or yeah. <laughs> Yeah, an unpaid week for the employ employer, yeah. um, a vacation for the employee, but not really a vacation because they're it's just... It's aggravating. They're, they're aggravated. They're frustrated about uh, equipment um, working in a way it ne uh, needs to be. Um, what about like uh, like financial uh, predictability? I I'm sure like budgeting and making sure that you're on a, a constant refresh cycle so you're not... I mean, if you're a large employer with a thousand, and you, you know, a thousand desktops or laptops, refreshing those all in one year could be costly. You know, maybe breaking that up and getting on a cycle every two years where you're re refreshing equipment um, on a regular basis is probably better financially. Mm -hmm. uh, going back again to your introductory comments, whether it's uh, three years or four years as being the most common replacement cycle or two years, I'd be interested to know what the business case is for that. But I'm going to I will speculate that on that. But first of all, whether it's three years or four years, I'm going to say that the most common replacement cycle is when the PC breaks or when the user is finally having such a horrible experience. So one thing that we're actively trying to do in Empest Account Management is to proactively work with our customers, provide the visibility that they need so that they understand the age, the um, the, the technical um the technical aspects, the, uh, the the power of the chip, the RAM, uh, various things that they would need to know so that they can make informed decisions and start to plan. And so this is um, a really big project for us as we close out the year and head into 2024. Uh, we're trying to get very proactive with customers so that they can plan and not be sending in reactive one, two PC type orders 
Um, I will elaborate on it if you think about it. By the time that you've said, Empest, I need a machine. Think of what needs to happen. You need, we need to write a quote after we determine your requirements, if we don't have those uh, known. Okay, you need to approve it. We need to order it. It needs to ship to us. We need to provision it and then ship it out to the end user. That's a long time when your user is not with their machine. Um, you may have a spare, but nonetheless, um, the what we recommend is to actually be in front of things, keep a couple spares with Empest so that when the need comes, we can provision a machine for your user in a um, in a in a in a prompt fashion. Yeah, I, I would imagine that like if if you're on a what is it a break fix model where um, I'm waiting to the last minute to replace a piece of equipment, you know, because now it doesn't work. That employee has been frustrated for probably, I'm going to guess, six months, a year before that failed, and now it's failed. Now they're waiting, and that's just a productive uh, production killer. And it's also it's money in the bank that the uh, the business loses because they're not paying somebody, you know, fifty, sixty, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a year to not do something. Let's uh, jump into financial predictability, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in terms of budgeting, uh, leasing, and uh, hardware as a service, right? That sure. Haas, is that, uh, is that what that is? Or? That is correct. Yeah, there's a lot of ways uh, to get there, and it will depend on your accounting preferences, your cash position, and things of the like. Uh, sometimes there are uh, governmental incentives to um, to spend money, and so you get to, uh, if you buy it, then you get to, um, what do you call it, depreciate it all in the same year. So there's always things like that. But what we want to do by working with our customers is to give them the predictability so that they can budget, whether it is to um, use any remaining budget money from this year or to anticipate for next year, year two, year three, and so on. Um, some customers will choose leasing. I actually think this makes a lot of sense. Uh, again, if there's an accounting treatment and the accounting officer will need to decide if this is consistent with how the, the company wants to uh, run its expenses and, and, and its balance sheet. But leasing is is a nice way to go because it matches your your expenditure with the period during which your company is getting the benefit of that asset. And then lastly, hardware as a service, which is not just the asset, but management software and other services wrapped around there. Um, but that is also, you know, everything in this world these days is is available as a service. And so from Epis, we do have hardware as a service and I've uh, seen these things from the major vendors as well. So what, uh, you want to go a little more in depth of uh, what is hardware as a service? I mean, obviously I know if I have a Salesforce license or something like that, software as a service, it's, mm -hmm. you know, I'm paying for somebody, a seat, and I'm able to use that product and there's upgrades that go into it. How does a hardware as a service work? Yeah, so the financial model is the same as, uh, say, SaaS, which is probably the best known as a service out there. So you pay as you go. So what are you getting as you go? You are getting the use of the asset. You're getting updates to the software. Um, you're getting um, sometimes support. You're getting security capabilities. Um, you can get uh, an upgrade to the OS. It really just depends on, on how that is fashioned. But um, you look at all of the costs that relate to that um, device, not just the device, uh, and those things get rolled into hardware as a service. And uh, that has a special appeal, typically from an accounting perspective or those that would simply prefer to uh, spend their money later rather than sooner. Gotcha. So uh, more or less, uh, kind of following that SaaS model, I have 20 employees and I go down to 15. I just cut off that expense. I go up, uh, if I'm at 20 and I go to 25, I'm just absorbing more expense with it. Yeah, so there's really there, just a there flexible. Is that flex. I mean, uh, it would be hard to go down. I mean, you'll, you'll have to at least cover the, the hardware cost of that. But yeah, that would be, they'll be built into the model. Awesome. Uh, yeah, what about warranty? I mean, obviously, you know, older machines, need to be serviced probably more frequently than newer machines. Um, you know, there's speed issues, there's, um, I don't know, hard drive crashes, RAM problems, whatever it is. Um, you, what do you do about warranty? Well, these machines are only spec'd to live 
so long. In fact, moving from just year three to the fourth active year of a, of a use of a PC, uh, it is uh, you'll see eight times as many hardware failures in year four as you do in year three. So it certainly argues for if your asset is getting long in the tooth to make sure that it's on warranty, but probably even better, have this managed known plan to uh, to take it out of circulation and get your user a good working um, device that isn't going to cost them 13 minutes a day or 5.5 days a year. So what do you, what do you think the, the best plan is for somebody in dealing with older equipment? Like obviously you said you want to get some predictability. I would imagine like let's just take a you know a fourth, a fourth, and a fourth. So in a four-year period, I'm replacing 25% of my um, uh, equipment each year so that by the fifth year, I'm now recycling that first, um, first group of people who had their machines replaced. Mm -hmm. So how do you get to that kind of thing? And maybe it's two years, maybe it's three, who knows? Yes. But I mean, like, how do you manage the warranty on older equipment? So let's say you're walking into a business that has six or seven-year-old machines and you're saying, hey, you gotta replace a thousand machines sure. right now is there a way to like leverage that so you can maybe use a combination of warranty um, in order to compensate pulling money out of my pocket? I, I think your question is the answer. The warranty will serve a nice role of bridging you over. So uh, some of the oldest machines will be the ones that argue for being replaced most immediately. But for those which are one step back, the way to get another year out of those is to buy that warranty because they have a much greater likelihood of failing on you. And so that's the logical slice of your, of your assets to have on warranty, aside from everything else, out to the front too. But typically when you buy a, a PC, most of our customers will opt for three years of coverage out of the gate. That's out of the gate though, but what happens you know, in that? Year four comes and then <laughs> yeah. you start to have that 8X increase in failures. And so one of the things I wanna do a better job of with my customers is relating to them the value that comes out of a warranty. We can all run uncovered. Um, and to use a phrase that Marty has used before, it doesn't matter until it matters. Right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you'll wish that you had the warranty. What we're trying to do is no, we're, we're going to meet all of our customers wherever they are, and we're going to put that plan in place with them so that they have the best experience that they can out of what they have today and move toward um, a great place, which is predictable, um, optimal use of your, and I know we're mostly talking PC assets here. But, you know, you had mentioned earlier that um, something about keeping spares around. Mm -hmm. um, is that something a business typically does or is it they, they don't do? Or, you know, like what's the percentage of spares um, a business should keep around just to, you know, uh, be uh, in a good place where they're, they're not taking a risk of like, I've got 25 people here who aren't working because I don't mm -hmm. have enough computers and theirs are down. I think I think everybody should have a spare, even if it's actually an older machine that you have taken out. Now, most of the time we are recommending that you have a couple of spares ready to go that are contemporary and ready to go into use. But again, as we meet all of our customers where they are, it might be that the first thing that we do is to put one or two of their older, less old machines uh, ready for service, and then uh, they'll buy new ones as they go forward. But um, in order to uh, allow your company to maintain its its agility, you should have some spares. Um, and and Empus does hold spares for quite a number of our customers. Is there a certain number it should be, or I just it really just two? Oh. Two. I mean, if if you're a much larger company, it could be bigger. But I mean, two is a safe number. I mean, and I, you know, I mean, if you're only 10, 10 employees, then maybe one. But one, two, three. Okay, great. Um, let's talk about like uh, Windows Ten. I mean, that's end of life, right? Um, or it could be coming up. When is it? Uh, when does that happen next year? Yeah, it's, you know, how it's, do you... it's October of next year, and I'm sure the manufacturers are trying to get in front of it, but it is an uncertain world, and so we're encouraging our customers, we're educating them, letting them know that Windows 10 will go off of support, and uh, you need to be ready for that. Uh, there could be a traffic jam to buy PCs next summer in the run-up to um, the the end of life for Windows 10. Um, another thing to look at is across time these operating systems they get bigger and bigger they bloat, and 
So um, that will argue for a more powerful computer as well. So even if you're going into a, um, even if you're buying some assets right now, the eye should be toward making sure that they're comfortably able to serve Windows 11. Not the minimum configs, but recognizing that um, the demands on PCs will, will only get larger and the demands of the OS are only going to get bigger as well. So the minimum specs are are uh, wholly inadequate. So spec with an eye toward having uh, room beyond what's called for, for Windows 11. Well, I mean, we've all run into that uh, situation where uh, across any Windows product, uh, even Macs, like um, as you uh, get into a new operating system, the old equipment is just not running that efficiently. Mm -hmm. I mean, so maybe you're short on RAM, maybe you're short on uh, uh, processing speed, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Um, uh -huh. Can you give me an idea of like, um, how do you manage through that now, too? So now you've got, is this, you know, if Windows 10 ends of life or some, you know, Mac product ends of life, their operating system or their support for it, you know, how does that affect the equipment now? Is that a more accelerated um, buy into new equipment or upgrading of things like, I don't know, hard drives or memory or whatever it might be? What we're offering our customers is to provide a hardware report to them, which provides the visibility they need. And together, we can look at those and say, well, it looks like these should come off. Uh, some customers may have money money that they need to spend between now and the end of the year. Others will say, I don't have a dime to spend until you know, the second week of January. But we can help customers figure out which, which of those to buy when. Well, Ken, here, as we finally wrap up, I know we've wrapped up a couple times, but uh, is there any final, final thing you want to say uh, to the people listening out there? Final, final is a call to action. Speak with your Empest account manager, request a hardware report, and look through it. Take us up on our offer to make a multi-year plan so that you will have reliable costs, uh, predictable costs, and reliable performance for maximum productivity by your users. We believe in it strongly and we want to do it with you. So there you have it. Thanks for uh, listening and watching today and uh, thank you, Ken, for joining us. Great to join you. Thank you, everybody.